welcome back to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I'm your host, Karen E. Osborne. I am the author of Women's Fiction, Suspense, Getting It Right, Tangled Lies, which is a murder mystery, Reckonings, a family saga, lots of suspense, and my new historical novel comes out in September, True Grace. And my guest today is a fascinating man. His name is Cam Horans. Welcome, Cam. Thanks, Karen. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you. Uh, you're going to really you're going to enjoy. He's, he has a really interesting, interesting life and interesting books. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, his, his two in a series. So one came out in July and another is due in October. So the one that came out in July, book one, is called Stable. And Tyler Zahn is a hero to love. This is what one reviewer wrote. Deeply wounded, undeniably, undeniably flawed, but determined to do the right thing in Cam Torrens' intensely dramatic debut thriller. The stakes of Zahn's search and rescue work in the Colorado Rocky Mountains have never been higher or more personal. Trim your fingernails, love that expression, before you start this one. And a second one, as I said, comes out in October. So, Cam, let's talk about this. Let's talk about, you are actually a search and rescue guy, right? That's correct. Yes, I, uh, you know, I did, I had a 30 year career uh, in the Air Force as a, as a transport and air refueling pilot. And uh, at the end of my uh, career, we settled out here in the middle of the Rocky Mountains and I joined search and rescue right away. I've always been a, a hiker um, and it's just an important part of our first five years in our our new home and my stories all have a element of backstory of search and rescue in them it's an important part of, of this series you know um you mentioned I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your protagonist uh tyler zahn and how much of you is in him <laughs> well, I like to say Tyler Zahn is a version of me that's 10 years younger with a lot more hair and probably a better personality, but <laughs> there's a little bit of me in him. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. A young, just a little younger version of yourself. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. So um, as you are, so tell, tell us a bit about the premise of the book. So this, he's a search and rescue guy. It's a thriller. What? Just give me a sense of the story. Yeah, Tyler Zahn. Uh, he's had some some hard going in a, in his <laughs> air career. So he was deployed uh, support of the Iraq War, and his son came down with the flu. He came back to the states for that and passed away. And then his son uh, passed away. His son passed away, uh -huh. and, and while he was back in the states. Um, one of his air crews was involved in a crash in Iraq. So nothing went right. And he kind of spiraled down after that. He left his family. He left the Air Force. Uh, life was going down the tubes. And uh, he's now back out. He's out in the Rockies trying to kind of reinvent himself and, and uh, reestablish himself. And one of the things he wants to do is reconnect with his daughter. He's divorced from his wife, but he wants to reconnect with his daughter, Daria. But the ironic thing about getting into the same problems that he had before out here in the Rockies, he's got some search and rescue responsibilities, and he's trying to balance family and the mission of what he wants to do, doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah, and and so what's the what's the you know what's the flaw in the story? I mean, what's the what's the problem? Uh, the problem is that there's a search and rescue mission where a young girl goes missing and they suspect mm -hmm. foul play. And mm -hmm. so it's taking him away from his daughter and he feels guilty about that. She just wants him to go save the girl. But in the meantime, since she's got extra time, she's finding romance in the town and he's a little nervous about that. So the story That's goes from that. Good. That sounds pretty darn good. 
And does the second one start up right where the other one last ends, or is there time that goes by? Or there's uh, there's some time that goes by. I I got the idea for the second one from my my two uh, middle school sons. They said, "Papa, you should write a book about one of your search and rescue people getting lost." And I said, "Well, that's an interesting premise. I wonder how that could happen." And the book kind of spun off from there. So. Very cool. Oh, and your kids inspired you. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of, uh, we, wa- we have a lot of authors that watch us and would be authors. And I think readers too are just interested. So here you are, you, you leave the Air Force, you have these, you, you start volunteering, search and rescue, you have this idea in your head is that like then you just wrote it and got published or what was that publishing journey like? Well, I've always been a reader. So I learned, you know, I read at an early age. My mother brought me up in libraries. I'm sitting in the library right now as we do this interview. And I, I'm on the board here at the library. It's an important part of my family's life. Uh, and so I've been a lifelong reader. I've always thought about writing because I wanted to uh, help, you know, give a gift to somebody the way so many authors have given gifts to me. So it's been in the back of my my mind. And um, uh, right before the pandemic started, totally coincidental, I said, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on search and rescue book and see where that goes." Um, that's neither of these books we're talking about. That one's in a top desk drawer. Uh, oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be pulled out at a later date. <laughs> That's how I got into it. And uh, when I pitched uh, this book that's getting published, I actually pitched the second book, the one that's uh, coming out, the third book. It's coming out in uh, October as a standalone. And then when the publisher said they were interested. I said, hey, would you mind reading the book before it and see if you're interested in that. I, I didn't have the guts to ask him about the very first book that was in the top drawer, but that's how I ended up with two books coming out within three months of each other. Wow, so you didn't have any trouble getting a publisher. It happened all pretty fast? Oh, no. <laughs> so I started writing in 2020 and uh, it was just turning 2023 at the contract from Black Rose Writing. So. Um, there's not a pile of rejections in my desk drawer. It's a pile of emails, well over 100. <laughs> yes, there you go. You know, people don't realize, I think, how hard it is and how much resilience we have to have, you know, because people say no, people say no, and you have to just keep keep going, keep trying. So I'm glad that, I'm glad that that worked out for you, and then not one, but two. So it really worked out. <laughs> that sounds really good. You said that uh, you were a reader all your life. I, I raised my children in the library, too, and my kids would, before they would even get all the books they, they wanted, they'd lie on the floor and start reading. You know, before we even got home, they would be, you know, reading the next book. And, uh, and my grandsons, too, I... I'm bringing them up in the library as a, as a grant. I don't raise them, but I'm bringing them into the library. So tell us about, was there a book that had like a really big impact on you, either as a reader, as a child, as a writer? What's, what are some of those impacts that books have had on you? Well, the uh, I, it's almost a cliche book, but uh, Stephen King's On Writing, I've read that two or three different times. I love to read uh, autobiographies of writers. Even before I started writing, I enjoyed reading. You know, I read uh, James Mishner's autobiography. I read Louis L'Amour's autobiography. Uh, there's just something about the story of a writer that's always appealed to me. Uh, another favorite book of mine is uh, uh, William Manchester's American Caesar, which is nonfiction biography of MacArthur. And uh, I love the idea that he could portray a character with so much respect, but uh, nobody really seemed to like him much. And I was like, wow, that's some kind of author that can create a story like that. So those, those are some books off the top of my head uh, that I've enjoyed. That's great. And is there anything that you've been reading recently that you could recommend to our 
audience? Well, I usually have three or four going at one time. So I have an audio book for when I'm working out every morning. Uh, I usually have two ebooks that I'm reading and, and maybe a paperback. The I just finished No One Will Miss Her by Cat uh, Rosenfield, which is a psychological suspense. And it had me going the whole time. That, that's usually what I do on audio, psychological suspense. Um, well, let's see, two books that that made me laugh, one fiction, one nonfiction. So uh, Gail Ward Olmsted's uh, Miranda Knights cracked me up. And <laughs> it did me too. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, Cheryl Aurelia's uh, Grow, damn it, uh, is, is another funny one. She blogs about life, and I was reading some of the passages out loud to my wife. It was, it was pretty hilarious. Uh, suspense, uh, Carolina Varian. Uh, by Brooke L. French was a good one. I'm uh, and I won't uh, try to butter you up too much, but Tangled Lies had me going. I I really did read that one in a night. I loved your book. Um, oh, those, thank you. I've been re I've been reading Lena Gibson's got some draft books coming out for a dystopian series she's doing, and she is a smooth writer. It does it's almost like she just puts those words out. You never catch any mistakes. So big fans of her work. So you're a very eclectic reader. You read all kinds of books. That's really good. That's how I learn to just read different genres, different, not just right. the genre I write in. No, I didn't, I didn't always do that. But when I joined a critique group, I started to get an opportunity to read outside my genre. Mm -hmm. And then um, just uh, the Black Rose writing, it was an unexpected gift yes. to join that group of authors and actors their work. Yeah, yeah, we get to read each other's work all the all the time. We share a, a publisher, uh, as you might know. So, um, how do people find out more about you? How do they find your wonderful blog? How do they find out more about your books? What you're going to do to launch your next book in November? Where can they find you? So, uh, my website is pretty easy: camtorrens.com. So, all one word. Uh, C A M T O R R E N S dot com, and uh, I've got uh, Instagram Cam underscore Torns, uh, Facebook Cam Torns Writer, and then if you go on Goodreads Book Bub and type Cam Torns in, you'll you'll find me there. But the the website talks about what I'm reading. It's my website kind of looks, I think, like your your uh, video blog here because <laughs> it's got uh, information about my books that are coming, uh, but always has my current books I'm reading and what I've just read. So Yeah, I, I highly recommend his his blog. It's cool. It's, it, it's interesting. So do you have a cover? Do you have a picture of your book so we can, our audience can see it? I do. This So this is- Oh, look at that. Stable. Stable. Doesn't that look good? All right. So I hope you guys out there are going to follow Cam. You're going to buy his book. You're going to read his book. You're going to write a review. You're going to follow him. Go to his website. All of those things. We so appreciate you. We thank you in advance. And please, if you're in touch with Cam and you met him here, let him know. Until next time, hope to see you on What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Bye, everybody. Thanks, Karen.